Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. This is episode 441, and today we're going to catch up on the last three weeks of Venom Absolute Carnage tie-ins that came out. Uh, they've been slowing down because we're getting very close to the end. I think there's only like uh, a Captain Marvel one-shot coming out, and then like another one-shot, I think. I can't remember everything that's uh, that's coming down the pipe. Uh, but there's also, I think, a Venom number 20 is, I think, an epilogue issue. And then, of course, Absolute Carnage number 5. And I think next week there is no Absolute Carnage stuff. So maybe next week, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get some movie news. I can catch up on that. Um, or, you know, I'll review, like, the Toxin miniseries. I'll try to squeeze in one of the older things that we never got to. I'll try to squeeze it in before the season ends and everything. So uh, yeah, this episode we're going to talk about Lethal Protectors number three, uh, Venom number 19, and then Weapon Plus number one. Like all of these are absolute crash tie-ins. And as I talk about each one, the digital codes will pop up on the screen. So, you know, first person to put those codes in will get these comic books. And try to share if you can. I mean, if you're feeling a little greedy, that's okay. I can't stop you. Uh, you know, if you want to try to get all three codes, but, you know, try to distribute it, let other people get a chance and uh, let people know in the comments down below which code you got. So that way we know which codes have already been taken and which ones are still up for grabs. Uh, so, all right, let's dive in first to Lethal Protectors number three uh, by Frank Thierry and the art is by Flaviano and the you know same team that's been doing the other two issues this one I'm just going to sum up really quickly uh because you know I would say most of this is just a fight it's you know all the people you know the side characters that were in uh, Maximum Carnage all of them have shown up it's Cloak and Dagger there's the new Deathstroke is there Morbius Iron Fist uh, I think Firestar is there too and and they're all coming to rescue Misty Knight in the sewers down below underneath New York City where she's being uh, tr you know chased by the new Demo Goblin which is Shriek with the Demo Goblin powers um, and then also with her is Man Wolf you know which is like the corrupted John Jameson who is now like a Carnage slash hybrid Man Wolf thing and and then they have an army of you know symbiote pawns and cult members that are helping them out too so it's basically just a big fight and the artwork is really great there's some really great panel layouts and they show all the characters doing their thing everybody kind of gets like their moment to shine there's great big page spreads like two page spreads like this one here that show the battle and overall i thought this was fun i thought this was a better ending than what uh, Frank Terry did with the Deadpool uh, versus Carnage miniseries. I thought that ending was just kind of all over the place and a little messy. This one I felt like was nice because it, it wrapped things up um, and it also set some things up. And I hope it pays off. Uh, what we see here is that uh, Misty Knight fights back and she you know fights back trying to save John Jameson as Man Wolf she's trying to convert him back to his human form so that she can reason with him she's not having a lot of luck with that and of course Dima Goblin or Demo Goblin whatever she's called now she's coming in and, and, and you know taking a piece out of Misty Knight uh, attacking her and then luckily all the heroes show up and they fight their way to Misty and they're able to rescue her but she will not leave without John Jameson that's what I really like about the character and it also what Frank Terry's writing like he's going back to that emotional hook where they went to the cult of carnage and they did that whole story in uh, Doverton I think Colorado and then now you know she's like look this whole thing is about me saving John it's not even just about defeating carnage for me it's about saving my friend and so that's what the story is and they get a good moment to do that towards the end uh, Cloak is able to teleport them all away there's a couple times where I thought Demogoblin was dead uh, she gets shot up by death uh, uh, de uh, de <laughs> I almost called him Deathstroke but death deadlock or deathlock uh, she she gets shot up by him like riddled with bullets and I was like oh she's dead and then she you know gets back up and she uses her shriek powers so apparently she still has those and uh, and then she gets put down again when man wolf uh turns on her and attacks her uh and and seriously wounds her but she doesn't die either and she heals I guess from the symbiote and whatever she's been the demon that's inside of her uh kind of helps her out and uh, and so the you know cloak shows up grabs all the heroes and man wolf and he's like I hope I don't regret this and teleports them all to safety and uh and I would say safety is a, a loose term I don't know where they get teleported to, just like a random alley. Uh, but uh, but underneath them is still all those symbiotes, still the army of symbiotes out there attacking. Uh, but they take some time to go back and recuperate at an undisclosed facility where they take John Jameson and they put him in a tube and they're like trying to you know heal him and, and, and revert him back to his former self. And luckily there's some you know uh, progress with that, which is really good. And then it cuts to a couple hours later and, I, and then I got a panic attack because I was like, oh no. Is this going to end like two weeks later, like the Deadpool versus Carnage one did? But it doesn't. 
It's just a couple hours go by. Uh, all these events took place uh, between, I guess, issues one and two of Absolute Carnage, or two and three, or like somewhere in there in like those first couple issues. So now they're able to uh, gear up. They have their whole team together, and they also have Man Wolf on their side again, uh, who is, of course, regretting his actions. So I'm sure Frank Thierry is going to touch on that more in the Ravencroft series that are coming out soon, because I think the main one focuses on John Jameson. Um, but uh, the team decides that, you know, leaving Misty Knight and John behind they're all going to go in and fight Carnage. You know, like Misty's like, I want to stay here with my friend. He's still recuperating. And they're like, fine. But, you know, Cloak Dagger, Deathlock, Morbius, all of them, Firestar, they're like, we're going to go and join the battle. So I guess it's going to be to be concluded in Absolute Carnage number five. So yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. And uh, I really liked uh, the artwork in it. And I hope that that pays off. I mean, I'm thinking about issue five of Absolute Carnage. And I'm like, is this is it a double size issue? I don't know, because there's a, apparently a lot going to happen. And apparently these heroes are going to show up in the final battle. And, you know, and John Jameson was saying like how he thinks he's like, I've been in Carnage's mind. I saw his memories. He's I'm pretty sure he's going to win this battle. So those heroes are like not on our watch. We're going in to help out. We're going to do everything we can to stop him. So uh, so I like that. I like that setup. But I hope it really does pay off in uh, issue five. Absolute Carnage. I hope those heroes show up and they get a little taste of the action. And hopefully they do stop Carnage. But uh, we'll see, because obviously this is only the halfway point of Donny Cates' story. So I'm sure there's a lot more to come. And of course, now there's like a sand blaster outside. So I apologize for the background noise. I'm just going to try to power through this. Uh, but yeah, every like week around this time, and I, I didn't know, I forgot it was Thursdays, but they like sandblast the, the building next to us for whatever reason. I guess it gets that dirty every week. So it's a, it's a lot of noise out there. I apologize for that. I'm going to try to talk as, over it as loud as I can. Um, issue 19 here of Venom. This one I'm going to try to be brief with as well. Uh, it was pretty good. Actually, I thought this one was cool. It focused more on Dylan. Uh, it takes place uh, obviously between issues, I think, one one and two or two and three of absolute carnage as well so it's still early on and it shows spider-man you know it, it starts off with uh miles morales getting you know to consumed by the carnage symbiotes um and being left behind and then it picks up where you know eddie brock gets away with uh with uh, scorpion and he's like trying to save him and he's like i wonder what spidey's up to i hope he's keeping my boys safe uh, i hope he's keeping you know dylan safe and then it cuts to wolverine the new avengers and everyone teaming up uh you know fighting so this kind of picks up a little bit where the uh that new avengers one shot left off too but then ties into with the uh with the maker here who is of course a unicorn now he's got four symbiotes attached to him and uh, you know he's got the hybrid suit on him and so he's attacking all the heroes so that's pretty much like the front half of the book is everyone fighting there's a great funny moment with a fastball special where a thing tries to throw spider-man and he totally screws it up i thought that was kind of a fun beat um ivan Coelho's artwork here is really great and donny cates's writing in this one is very quick i like this one it, it kind of the story keeps moving and things keep happening in every page you have dylan going and breaking out sleeper and there's a big revelation spoilers here for Dylan uh, but it looks like the sleeper symbiote or any symbiote can't bond with Dylan uh, because there's something already going on with him and he starts to or, you know mutate himself and he's showing that he maybe isn't 100% human and I'm thinking maybe he's some kind of weird human symbiote hybrid maybe you know when uh, Eddie Brock hooked up with Ann Wang and you know because he has a symbiote attached to him when they hooked up or when they shared the symbiote or whatever maybe it it reproduced in a different way and it, it made a hybrid child uh, we don't know we don't know exactly what Dylan is but he's definitely something he's not just an ordinary child so uh and that is kind of neat because it looks like they're going to release a one shot coming up with him and uh, Red Goblin Jr uh you know with Normie I guess they're going to do like a one shot with the two of them and the first thing I thought of when I saw that cover was the super Super Sons from Marvel or from DC uh, where it's like Superman's son and uh, and Damian Wayne uh, Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne and I really like that series by Tomasi a lot and I was like oh if they do something cool like that with these two kids who have like parents that are kind of super villains and you know uh, you know Dylan has an anti-hero dad uh, but who was a villain at one point and then you have uh, you know Normie whose grandfather was uh, a you know is the Green Goblin and his father was a Green Goblin but he's kind of anti-heroish and heroish at times so uh, that'd be cool I'd like to see them do more with that so uh, hopefully they will um, but in this one, yeah, you kind of focus on them and you focus on all the heroes. And I like this because we didn't get these heroes fighting Carnage. You know, in Absolute Carnage 4, I felt like a little gypped in that battle there. So it was nice to see them battle here and then also see, you know, Sleeper show up as like the guard dog for uh, for Dylan here. And Dylan says and later on in the book that he's not really a dog person. So that's why Sleeper turns into a cat. Uh, but then this also picks up from the thread from the New Avengers book where Hawkeye shows up and he jumps into the battle 
and helps them fight back. So it looks like they wrapped up a lot of those threads there uh, and Hawkeye got into the battle and then they get to the point where we are at the end of issue like two or three of, uh, of uh, Absolute Carnage, the main book, where Hulk shows up or Bruce Banner shows up and he's like, you know, willing to work the machine and he can separate the codexes or codices from everybody and uh, and then Spider-Man and him, you know, are uh, Spider-Man and Dylan are talking and then uh, Dylan gets a chance to talk to Sleeper and Sleeper says, hey, you got to be honest with Eddie. So it looks like both Dylan and Eddie are hiding secrets from each other. Eddie, you know, Dylan doesn't know he's Eddie's son. He thinks he's his little brother and Eddie hasn't told him that he's his son. And then meanwhile, now Dylan has a secret where he's some kind of symbiote hybrid creature thing. And uh, he's hiding that from his father now, uh, who he thinks is his older brother. <laughs> I know it gets crazy. Um, and then at the end, Eddie Brock shows up and they hug and they have like a nice bonding moment there, which was really great. Uh, but then, you know, that with that little thing where Sleeper at the end, he's like, you know, please, you got to tell Eddie the truth at some point. So I'm sure at some point they will, because obviously they're dealing with carnage stuff right now. They got a lot to, to deal with because this is like happening around issue two and three. So obviously the Hulk battle's going on currently. And we, we kind of cut left with the cliffhanger where, you know, Eddie gets a new symbiote in a way uh, made up of all the codices and it helps like enhance his current symbiote or like with the codice in him or the codex in him. And then he goes off after, you know, uh, Carnage, who is now becoming like the Grendel in a way. So that's where we are currently. Um, but then we have one more story we got to talk about today that is also a flashback story. Weapon Plus just came out yesterday as I'm recording this. It's Thursday morning. And uh, this is written by uh, someone who hasn't been doing any of the books, Jed McKay, who I'm not very familiar with, and Stefano Raphael, who is the artist, who I'm also not familiar with. But I did like the art very much. And what this is is kind of a throwback uh, to that, uh, you know, Venom storyline that they did where they talked about Weapon V. And then there also ties in the Weapon H character, which if you guys haven't read Greg Pak's, you know, run on, um, I think he did like a Weapon X book, but then he spun out of it a Weapon H book where it's a guy who is kind of like a half Wolverine, half Hulk creature. Um, and, and I read some of it. It's okay. I mean, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, and uh, when they did that crossover, I think it was three issues. It was called Wolverines or something. And um, and it was like Hulk and Wolverine and the, the new Weapon H guy all fighting each other. I was like, eh, it's fine. It's like fun popcorn stuff. Greg Pak is pretty good at writing stuff like that, like Planet Hulk. I really like that. I thought it was a very fun popcorn, you know, big adventure gladiator type story. Um, so Weapon H, I wouldn't say I'm like, a, I don't know much about him other than I just read a couple stories. And that's really all I know uh, in this one it's you know his personal life he's talking to his wife and her, her he's trying to get to know her mother-in-law who doesn't approve of him uh, and she you know she kind of knows he's a Hulk and so she's scared of what trouble that might bring and everything like that so they have like real human elements in here of like the mother not approving of the boyfriend kind of story but then they mix in all this espionage stuff because uh, Weapon H he was part of a group uh, kind of like Wolverine was like Weapon X or Department H and stuff where there was like a group of guys who got sent in well these guys now they were all part of that weapon program well now they've signed up to be part of the weapon v program and so they all have symbiotes on them and so of course now that makes them all you know have codices in them now these symbiotes are clones i think they call them clones the doctor who's like in charge of the project because they go through the whole history of the weapon program and they say weapon plus started off with weapon one and that was captain america and then after he died or went into the ice everyone was worried all that money was lost and billions of dollars or you know whatever went they thought was down the drain so they found found any notes they could and they tried to replicate it as best they could. Of course, uh, Winter Soldier was made, I think, over in Russia. So he was still kind of part of the Project Rebirth thing. Uh, but then Weapon 2 came along and 3 and 4 and then eventually Weapon 5, which is they used the Grendel, which was frozen on ice, which was under, you know, shield control. And also weapon, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, I guess, uh, teaming up with Weapon Plus, I guess they still had some kind of uh, finger on that uh, research and stuff, even though like S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury were kind of looking over it. So it was like a joint effort kind of project, I guess. And then they show like some of those creatures, like, you know, the bear and all those other creatures from uh, that we talked about earlier, the different weapon programs um, that are, you know, became enhanced. So like, all right, we couldn't enhance humans. So we enhanced, uh, you know, animals at one point. And then eventually they got to Vietnam where they used Project V. Uh, which was, you know, like the Project 5, obviously, but also Project, not really Project Venom. I, I guess they call it that in the chalkboard in one of the other issues. But in this one, they kind of more or less talk about just Project V. It's like the fifth fifth stage of their pro uh, progress. But then, you know, a couple weeks ago, they say, so I guess all of this, all of Donny Cates' run has happened in a matter of weeks, uh, seven weeks, apparently. So seven weeks ago, the Grendel got out 
in New York uh, with those four symbiotes that were being transported and came alive again and got, you know, went up into, you know, and, you know, up into the air and, and attacked New York and Venom and uh, Miles Morales fought it and everything like that. And then Venom ultimately beat it eventually. Um, but so this, so that was like, that was like the version of the Grendel, but this frozen one that they've been leeching off of for years, they haven't, they've been extracting little pieces of symbiote and cloning it to enhance it. So it's almost like the uh, Daniel Way version of Venom, where it's like a piece of one symbiote and then cloned off. And that's what the Grendel was. They were able to create these other symbiotes. And that's what uh, Weapon H guys, uh, you know, his friends here, they all have on them. They all have these new clones because the original four were taken and they were part of that Grendel storyline in Donny Cates' first run. So these are like three or four more new ones that were created um, after the Grendel got out, uh, you know, using samples that were like, you know, laying around their office and stuff or whatever, or their labs or whatever. Um, and then meanwhile, Cletus Cassidy, um, you know, uh, the weapon H, like the big guy, he comes over and he says, look, um, you know, what's this machine here? And they said, oh, we built this machine to kind of uh, hide us from carnage because he can sense where these symbiotes are. And he kind of got, got onto our trail, but we needed to come get you first because we know you being a Hulk and a Wolverine, you might have a good chance to stop them. So like these are bad guys that used to work with him that he doesn't trust and doesn't like and wants to kill. But they're like, we need you because carnage is way worse than us. And so uh, if we have this machine that's cloaking us, but it, the battery's going to die soon and we can't recharge it. So now now's our time. You're here. We're going to just bring carnage right to us. So he shoots the machine and then carnage, you know, across like state lines can all of a sudden sense him. He's like, oh, there you are again, because he was trying to follow their lead, you know, like scent and everything like that. And he's like, oh, there you are. And all this, by the way, happens before he gets to New York. It's way before absolute carnage number one. Uh, they state in the beginning. Um, so yeah, it's pretty neat. And he just goes in, he gets a bus full of people and then he does something really gruesome. Actually, I won't spoil that part, uh, but he does something really gruesome to that bus full of people. It's really gnarly and sick uh, at the same time. Um, but it definitely is a very carnage thing that he would do. And, uh, by doing this, it enrages this weapon H guy and he becomes, you know, like his version. He's like the weapon H Hulk guy or whatever he is and i can't remember what name he goes by and so uh he goes in and he starts fighting carnage and uh and then the other troopers you know they're they're helping him fight back um carnage is drawn really sick here i love that he's starting to already gain a lot of his powers at this point he's probably got a handful of codices and meanwhile the doctor here keeps doing these eye drops throughout the issue and that actually pays off you find out what he's actually doing you find out that he's gone far off the deep end um and he has uh you know hulk's mother-in-law uh, or this version of Hulk, Weapon H's mother-in-law, uh, captured, and he's gonna, like, you know, we don't know what he's gonna do, it looks like he's gonna torture her, whatever, and he's like, look, this isn't mercy, and he pulls out a box cutter, he's like, this is not mercy at all, and then you're like, what's gonna happen, is he gonna kill her, you know, this is what he's trying to avoid, like, the Weapon H guy didn't want her hurt, even though they don't get along, he's, he's still, like, for his wife's sake and everything, and his family's sake, he doesn't want her hurt, uh, but meanwhile, we get an actual Hulk versus Carnage fight, it doesn't last very long, but at least we get more panels of them fighting than we did in Absolute Carnage number four, where the real Hulk fought Carnage, uh, with the Venom symbiote, at least this one we actually get a battle and it's really fun and it's really good battle and there's a lot happening to it and then there's even moments where you're like oh the battle's over and then hulk or weapon h comes through and knocks uh, carnage through the roof and is like all right we're gonna fly all the way up in the atmosphere and we're gonna hit the ground and we're gonna see who can survive and unfortunately they both survive um but uh but carnage you know and the doctor comes out and reveals what he's been up to this whole time and carnage comes up behind him and they're ready to attack and he says where's janice where's you know um my wife's mother-in-law uh and the guy or what her name's janice obviously and uh and he says uh you know what i let her live because i told her it wasn't mercy to let her live because carnage is eventually going to rule all of us and null's coming and god is coming and i am sacrificing myself to the cause and so uh hulk or weapon h looks at this and says you know what screw this and screw these guys he takes janice and he leaves them. He, he does not protect them. And he uh, does not do a heroic thing or anything. Doesn't help them fight Carnage. He just leaves them behind and lets Carnage rip them all apart. Uh, so yeah, I mean, pretty brutal. Not a very heroic action in my mind. Uh, very selfish action. But that's also kind of in keeping a little bit with this Weapon H character. He has a little bit of that side to him. And he also, on some level, is just like, look, I don't want to be a part of this. I want to get her far away from here. And, uh, and then, you know, if, if Carnage continues to be a problem, maybe I'll come back and deal with it later. Uh, you know, so I don't know if he'll show up in New York, probably not. But then we have a uh, weapon plus people uh, monitoring all this and they're seeing carnage advancing, moving on to New York.
before, and they're not worried. They're like, you know what, Carnage is going to get to New York. He's going to accomplish something, and uh, but I think one of these heroes, someone is going to stop him. Uh, they always do. The heroes always win. So I'm not worried right now, or this weapon plus person isn't worried right now. We have we still have more work to do. So apparently their missions um, are not over with, and they have a new weapon called Weapon XXX. Uh, weapon triple X. Um, so I hope it's not Vin Diesel uh, or uh, or anyone showing up. But uh, yeah, they apparently they have a new weapon in development, and so they're not so worried about Carnage. And then they also show a little uh, hint here at World War V, which is going to be the Man Thing World. Uh, he's like Weapon, well, you know, four, I guess. Uh, but like they did a version of him before Man Thing that is called Man Slaughter, and that's going to be like a new one shot coming out, which I probably won't get because I think from here on out. I don't think I'm going to buy any of the, the Venom stuff uh, moving forward. I think I'm just going to get it in trade or on sale digitally, but the printed copies, I think with Season 4, I want to kind of go in a different direction with Season 4. Um, maybe some of the weapon stuff, maybe I'll follow, just because the theme of Season 4 is not only the sequel movie and all the movie news for, uh, for the second movie, but also Agent Venom focus. Like We're focusing mainly on Flash Thompson throughout all of Season 4, with maybe one or two weeks where we talk about Eddie and then also um, Carnage. You know, We have a little bit more carnage stories to go through as well and then we'll talk about the new venom uh you know cartoon series coming out the spider-man one uh where venom you know it's like Ven maximum venom uh we're going to talk about those too so i want that uh, season very focused on that stuff and i'm not gonna probably talk a lot about the current comic books because well it's too much movie news to go through and i want to focus on the movie news stuff because we're going to start hitting that uh you know ground running probably early next year with uh, with movie news so i want to make sure i'm open for that and that should come first and because that's how we started this channel was mostly movie news uh, for the Venom movie. So we're going to get back to that next season. And anything we talk about comic related will probably just be Agent Venom stuff and then occasional things other, you know, here and there. And then the cartoons, obviously. Um, but maybe we'll pick up a couple of the weapon stuff. I'm still not sure yet because that has like a military tie to it and that'll fit into the theme of Agent Venom. But the main Donny Cates book going forward, uh, after issue 20, I'm going to stop collecting Venom and, uh, and stop reviewing them every episode. And what I might do is just, you know, maybe when we get to season five after the second movie comes out, out. Uh, maybe, and I'll need more Carnage content or more Venom content. Maybe we'll go back and read them in trade and catch back up and talk more about them in season five. Uh, and that'll be like our, our filler season in between the second Venom movie and potentially the third Venom movie. Or if Venom shows up in Into the Spider-Verse 2 or something like that, like we might have other Venom things to talk about uh, in movie news. So, you know, so I want to make sure we keep that open as well. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think of these three issues down below. If you agreed with my reviews, uh, you know, or disagreed, whatever it is, comment down below so we can continue our conversation down there. And I'm sorry about the noise. I know it was still going on the whole time and it made me talk louder. I apologize for that. I'll try to adjust the volume the best I can when I edit this and I'll post this as soon as I can. I'm about to leave for work right now. So once I stop recording, I got to head to work, uh, but I'll try to record, you know, uh, edit this later tonight and try to get it up, uh, you know, Friday or Saturday at the latest. And if it is up by Friday, um, I am, I got to work on Friday, but when I get home, I'm going to do a live stream of Death Stranding on my Twitch channel. So make sure if you want to check it out, we can talk Venom stuff over there. Um, anything you have, any questions you want to ask, uh, definitely do it live. My Twitch channel, the link is down below, but it's twitch.tv slash seek and destroy. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you follow me over there so that you can be a part of our live discussions as we play Death Stranding, but we can still talk about Venom stuff, obviously, and anything else you want to talk about. So thank you so much. And I will try to figure out a way to do live streams here in the future in season four on this show where I do Q and A's with you guys probably every like month or every two weeks, I'm thinking. So uh, I'm, I'm working on all that stuff, trying to get all that stuff set up for you guys. So we got a lot of new things in the future here i can't wait to get to it but let me know what you think of these down below i'd love to hear your thoughts on these uh these issues um overall i kind of like them i mean each one was fine for me the weapon h1 i felt like was our weapon plus one was probably my weakest but only by a little bit because i really did like uh kind of the ending of this was kind of fun and the dylan stuff in this one was really good so i gotta say for the tie-ins this kind of perked me up a little bit these weren't so bad um like i, I you know for those last like couple weeks there uh i felt like my energy on this uh series and talking about absolute carnage was dwindling and i felt like this was a nice boost to make me go okay cool and now we can see the light at the end of the tunnel we got a couple issues left to review so we'll definitely do that when they release i think the next one will come out in two weeks it's absolute carnage number five and then there will be two tie-ins after that to wrap up this series and then by then we'll be at episode 450 and we'll be wrapping up this season so thank you guys for being on this journey with me we got a lot more coming up so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff i'll see you in the future peace